Welcome to Holocaust, Welcome to Holocaust Histories, Holocaust. the podcast featuring mind-boggling stories from the Holocaust, remarkable tales of heroism and horror that are guaranteed to amaze you. Season 1. In the prime of their lives and careers, boxers' dreams are snatched and replaced by nightmares. Boxing is no longer for money and pride, but for bread scraps and survival. Fighting now takes place in concentration camps. The winner lives another day. The loser is killed. Dive into the astonishing stories of boxers' resilience and courage in the face of incomprehensible terrors. Each episode features a boxer with a different nationality and a unique experience during the Holocaust. Some will live, some will die. They will all fight to survive. Thanks for listening to this episode. Please rate, subscribe, and tell a friend. Do you know a story that would make a great episode of Holocaust Histories? We'd love to hear from you. You can email holocausthistories at gmail.com or message us on Instagram or Twitter with your suggestion. This episode contains graphic descriptions and sensitive subject matters. Listener discretion advised. I see the world gradually being turned into a wilderness. I can feel the suffering of millions, and yet, if I look up into the heavens, I think that it will all come right, that this cruelty too will end, and that peace and tranquility will return again. Anne Frank Jonas Kessler was a German Jew who grew up simultaneously alongside Nazism. When he was 10 years old, his father died fighting for Germany during World War I, one of 12,000 German Jews who fought in the war and died. Jonas developed into a natural athlete, participating in various sports. He trained at one of the two Jewish boxing gyms in Germany at the time. He fell in love and had two children, but when the Nazi party was elected into power in 1933, things became increasingly dire for German Jews like Jonas. The Nazi party soon introduced race laws, which prohibited non-Jews and Jews from marriage. The mother of his children was a Christian woman named Anna. Jonas was forced to leave his family and escape to Belgium and Poland. He would eventually be sent to the same concentration camp Oskar Schindler had a factory. This is a story of bravery and resilience. The story of Jonas Kessler. Jonas Kessler was born on March 24, 1908, in Cologne, Germany. His grandparents emigrated there from Galicia around 1905. His parents Yitzhak and Sarah had eight children, four sons and four daughters. There were around 9,745 Jews living in Cologne by 1900, out of a population of 370,000. Ten years later, in 1910, the population of Cologne rose to 516,000. The German census documented a total of 615,000 German Jews. In 1918, Jonas's father Yitzhak died from injuries he sustained in World War I while fighting for the German army. He was one of 12,000 Jews who died for Germany in World War I, a higher percentage than any other ethnic, religious, or political group. Jonas was a talented and natural athlete. He took a shine to boxing and started training at the JBC Maccabi, one of two Jewish boxing gyms in Germany at the time. There were around 100 members. He fought as a middleweight and light heavyweight boxer. The gym was located on the same street as the Cologne Synagogue. In 1926, at the age of 18, Jonas fell in love with a Christian woman named Anna. They didn't get married, but the two had children a daughter in 1927 named Hilda, and a son in 1929 named Leo. Jonas had graduated from high school and was training as a businessman in hopes to support his family. By 1933, the year the Nazi party was elected, there were 15,000 Jews in Cologne, along with six synagogues. The Aryanization of Germany was underway in Cologne. Jewish businesses were boycotted and blocked off on April 1st, 1933. Bankruptcies and acquisitions of these Jewish companies became common, with two-thirds going out of business. Jewish lawyers inside a justice building were assaulted, arrested, and loaded onto garbage trucks to be taken around the city. 
German Jews' lives were further thrown into turmoil as Germany enacted the Nuremberg Laws on September 15, 1935. This anti-Semitic race legislature prohibited Jewish and non-Jewish relations. Jonas and Anna faked a separation. He continued to see Anna and their children in secrecy. During one visit, the Gestapo caught him, but he managed to escape by hiding in a garbage bin in the courtyard. After this close call, Anna begged him not to come again, for his and the children's safety. In 1936, Jonas was fired from his job as a trader. Boxing as a German Jew was also challenging, with Nazi Germany in control of the sport. Jews were being forbidden from boxing. On November 10th, 1938, after Kristallnacht had occurred, Jonas fled to Belgium with Jewish members of his family. The JBC Maccabi and the synagogue in Cologne were both destroyed. He was unable to say goodbye to Anna before he fled, but snuck to his daughter's school where he waved at her through a gate, getting her attention. She went up to Jonas and he told her, I can't find mother. The whole family must leave today. Promise me that you will always be courteous and good. Jonas made it to Belgium safely and then traveled to Poland where he found his sister Johanna and brother Samuel. They were both expelled from Germany to Poland during the Zhebazhin refugee crisis in October of 1938. Jonas was taken to the Zhebazhnik train station in the winter of 1938. He worked there until the summer of 1939. About 40% of the Jewish population had emigrated by 1939 largely due to the events of Kristallnacht. By 1941, Jonas and his relatives lived in the Warsaw Ghetto. Jonas's mother and three female siblings were deported to Auschwitz between 1942 and 1943, where they were killed. Jonas and his brother were deported to Plashov labor camp. It was located in southern Krakow. It was the location of Oskar Schindler's enamel factory, built in 1943. Jonas was shot dead in front of Samuel on August 5, 1944. He was then soaked in paraffin and set on fire. Air raids on Cologne were numerous throughout World War II, including the first ever thousand bomber raid by the RAF on May 30th and 31st of 1942. This was codenamed Operation Millennium. Over a thousand bombers from the RAF attacked Cologne for three consecutive nights. Cologne was considered an important military target for the Allied troops. The city was heavily industrialized, with factories that produced war supplies. It also had a large railroad network that was used for the transportation of troops and weapons. The Battle of Cologne began on March 6, 1945. The city was occupied by 20,000 people in mostly destroyed surroundings. The exception was the cathedral, which remained standing. Even the closest observer might find it hard to pick out houses from streets in this city where 85 to 90 percent of the buildings have been destroyed. Clarence Smoyer of the 3rd Armored Division was a tank gunner at the battle. He said, Attacking such a large city gave the enemy plenty of places to hide, not just in the horizontal plane, but from the basements to the tops of five-story buildings. Cologne put us to the test. The U.S. forces captured the city on March 7th, except for a small area that was captured just over a month later. By the end of the war, the RAF had killed 20,000 people in Cologne, with 262 separate air raids. The victorious road to Cologne was first hammered out by RAF bombers by attack after attack, in which more than 32,000 tons of bombs went down. 700 aircraft of Bomber Command, including Canadian and Australian squadrons, and at last 3,000 tons to pave the way for the land forces. Between 30 to 40 Jews had survived and were found in hiding, including Wolfgang Zander, who the U.S. appointed as Chief of City Transportation. Jonas's brother Samuel survived the Holocaust. He became an executive board member of the synagogue community in Cologne. He also became a council member of the Social Democratic Party. He passed away in 1985. There are currently around 5,000 Jews in Cologne, with a Jewish museum expected to open in 2024. You can find Jonas's stumbling stone at 8 Kartoserhof in Cologne, the same location as where he was born.
friend. You can send any questions, corrections, and comments to holocausthistories at gmail.com.